Hello, Recruiter DNA community. Uh, this is Larry Hernandez, and I wanted to share how generative AI tools have made their way uh, into the tools we use every day. And I'm going to give you three examples. So first of all, in uh, Google Docs, and I'm just, I just pulled up an old version of my resume. And I used to use Chrome extensions like Harpa that are page aware, and you could say explain, you know, you could start interacting with it. Uh, but now uh, Microsoft and Google have both added chat or, you know, their version, their generative AI tool in here. So now I can just hit, I can hit tone. I can summarize bullet points. Um, so I could just come here and do bullet point. And so, and there it is. And I could just hit insert, right? And that saves a lot of time. So just think about all the times you have to update someone else's resume or any docs that you're using, PowerPoint, whatever it is. So now it kind of lives in here. That's cool. Okay. So number two, I was experimenting with a CRM called Folk. And the reason I was using it is because it works really well with LinkedIn. It's really easy to get files from LinkedIn in here. And so, but some of the cool things are here, let me just move my face over is that think of this as just an Excel spreadsheet at, or a Google sheet. And so you can make, so this is, you know, this is the information that it grabbed. Oh, uh, here, let me make myself smaller here. This is the information that it grabbed from LinkedIn. And sometimes it's not perfect when we scrape or when we take things from LinkedIn, like here, the job title, well, it has a job title and the company, right? So you can add columns here, right? And there's something called magic columns. See, it says magic field. You got three magic fields you can use on the free on the free version. And so here I called it clean job title, but you make a new field and you make a prompt. So my prompt is what is the person's job title? Please only give me the job title and no other information. No, it's not aware of what you're doing. So you've got to tell it, go to that column. And it gives you the columns here. In other words, so if I just put in the word job title without using this, it wouldn't know what I'm talking about. So I'm asking a generative AI to look at that column in this row and, and clean it up, right? And then I can test it here and I can hit generate. And so it took out the word and I can just kind of clean it up from there. That's pretty cool. Saves you a lot of time instead of writing a formula or using some of the tools. And here I want to experiment and say, put a prompt in here, based on the person's first name, what would be the gender, right? Sometimes we need these for sourcing tools. So I'm gonna hit generate, male, generate. Uh, sometimes, look, look at the output, sometimes it's a little rough, right? So I'm gonna have to do it again, male. Let's see, do we have a female here? here. And sometimes, you know, depending on their, on the background. Okay, so it got female, right? Because of Erica. So anyway, you know, you, you're, you can use this for different things. This magic field, I, didn't, I haven't renamed it yet. I just said, write a recruitment email, right? And so I can hit generate and you make the formula once and then you can populate it. I think it works on credits, uh, but so it wrote me an email. So if you're a spreadsheet type person, you can do this in, in, in Excel and in Google Sheets. It's a little rough. I'm not that comfortable with it, but this is something that you can do. Now, for the amazing star of the show, this is the first really generative AI sourcing tool out there. A lot of you know people are catching up, but but the people at Juicebox created People GPT, and so think of Seek Out or all the other tools that you use to source. Um, and so I would do I would make a search, right? So I'm going to use the one it gives me here. I'm just going to type it in a sentence, right? You know, give me the software engineers and FF from top stage fintech companies skilled in Python. That was just a sentence I put, but it turns those into filters. Okay, so instead of manually putting San Fran and whatever it is, uh, it turns them into filters. Think of LinkedIn Recruiter or your ATS or CRM, right? These are the fields they can search for. And I can always say, nope, I don't want that. I don't want cloud engineer. That's fine. And I can, I can drill down. So I've got 669 people and I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna give me the initial, what we call the long list, right? So here's the long list. Now here's something, two things that are amazing, or I think pretty cool. So it gives me a little summary. So basically it asks generative AI, read all of this, right? And then make me a little summary. That's kind of nice, I can copy and paste it. I can submit them or, you know, it may help. 
here is the magic and here's why I purchased this tool. So I've got 669 people that meet the criteria, but I'm on the phone with the client and they say, you know, we actually need someone that has video streaming experience, right? So I'm going to ask who has streaming experience. And what it's doing is it's, it took those 669 people and it's going to rank them, right? So you notice my number hasn't changed, but it found two people. And not only does it, has it found them, it gives it to you right up here, right? They contributed to the seamless integration and optimized video streaming performance. So now I could shortlist those two people. That is pretty cool. So what I've just done is I've created a list of candidates and now I'm having a conversation with my list, right? I mean, I could put here, I could re-rank them who has a PhD. And, and believe me, I love Boolean search strings, but this is nice because now I'm having a conversation with it and it's quick. So now oh, they have a doctorate from math. There's my shortlist person. So anyway, that's pretty cool. So I hope you can see how, how we used, how generative AI has made its way into these tools. But here's the thing. And if you don't understand the mechanics of making a prompt, you're just gonna get junk and you're gonna get frustrated. Okay, so that's why in the course we covered how to, that has not changed. All these things have come out. What has not changed is you're gonna get bad results if you don't know how to make that prompt. So keep practicing making your prompts.